the sine and cosine graphs intersect an infinite number of times, bounding regions of equal area, find the area of one of these regions. So you can see in this little picture here that I can just, uh, I can take this very first region in this first uh, quadrant. Actually, it's not just, it's the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant, yeah. Okay, so this looks like it's pi over four. This looks like it is something like uh, maybe a five pi over four, but how can I get it exactly? How can I be sure? I just set these uh, sine and cosine equal to each other, like so. Sine x is equal to cosine x, and you can take a look at your unit circle, see where those two things are equal to each other. Yeah, that does have like a pi over four. Um, or, you know what? Watch this fancy trick. I can d divide both sides by cosine x. And when I do, sine divided by cosine is equal to tangent. And then cosine divided by cosine, most of the time that's equal to 1, unless cosine is equal to 0, of course. All right, but hey, if, if that's the case, then... Uh, this thing would be undefined. Hey, let's ignore that for right now and maybe pull out a unit circle and see where is tangent equal to 1 because I haven't a clue. Hey, here's another opportunity. This is perfect where I could use one of my little stickers. Mm -hmm. And where's that unit circle one? Oh, yep, there we go. Let's go ahead and add that here because there's no way I could just pull this thing from memory. Okay, so um, I need tangent equal to 1, that is where sine and cosine are both the same. Right <laughs> there. Okay, anyway, so that happens, you can see here at pi over 4, and then it also happens over here at 5 pi over 4. Well, wow, we guessed that from the very start. Okay, but you know, in the pressure of the moment, whenever you're solving things on a test, on a quiz, on the AP exam, you don't think of those super obvious things. All right, so there's going to be our limits of integration. I'm just going to go ahead and integrate then from a pi over 4 to a 5 pi over 4. And what is our top function? I think it's sine. Yeah. We'll do a sine x minus a cosine x with respect to x. Anti-differentiate, anti-derivative of sine is going to be a negative cosine x. Anti-derivative of cosine is a positive sine, but, you know, there's still a negative sine in front of it. Evaluate that from a pi over 4 to a 5 pi over 4. Hey, it's totally convenient that I still have my unit circle here that's taped in place for me um, because I'm going to need it to plug these things in. Okay, so I've got... A negative cosine of 5 pi over 4 minus the sine of 5 pi over 4 minus the quantity of, you need to plug it in, positive pi over 4. So I've got a negative cosine pi over 4 minus the sine of pi over 4. Safe stop? Yep, yeah, sure. But hey, do your trick. Come on, get the practice. So negative of... Uh, see, the cosine of pi over 4, this is going to be over here in quadrant 3. That's a negative. They're both negative, so this is a negative negative, so that makes it a positive. Get rid of that. Come on. Erase it. Yes. Equals. It's double equals. There's this equal sign over here, and then I really wanted to make it equal over here. Um, pi over 2. S square root of 2 over 2. Yeah, that's what I mean. Minus, and then uh, the sine of pi over 2, 5 pi over 4 also is negative, so that's going to make this one a positive, pi over 2, minus this quantity here, and the cosine pi over 4 is a positive, root 2 over 2, oh yeah, but it's negative, <laughs> it's negative of 8 here, right, and then minus probably another one of those things, so yeah, the sine is another one of these, it's like a whole bunch of everything exactly the same. Um, if I add up the ones that are on the outside here, this is going to be one of these square roots of 2. And uh, let's see, minus, and I add these things up, it's going to be negative square root of 2. Negatives cancel, and I get 2 of these total, so it's 2. Square root of 2. Maybe even a number you could have guessed, right? There you go. So the area of one of these regions here is exactly 2 times the square, or square root of 2. Mm -hmm. All right, lovely. Let's uh, move on to another example. 5. Find the area of the region between the graphs of f of x equals 
3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x and g of x is equal to negative x squared plus 2x. Here, let me ask you a question. What shall we do first? Shall we set these things equal to each other so we can find where they intersect each other? That is a sound idea. Let's do it. But first, switch your crayon back to blue. 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x has got to be equal to a negative x squared plus a 2x. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to bring this down here so I have some room to solve this algebra problem. It's not calculus, it's algebra. All right, it is polynomial. It's going to get everything over here on the left-hand side. We have a 3x cubed when I, oh, these things just hey, can conveniently cancel out. Cancellation right. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, back to blue. And then subtract these and make this a 2x. Man, this is going to be super easy to solve because we can just say factor out. That's not 2. This is 12. Come on. Um, now it's super easy to solve. Uh, let's factor out a 3x from this, shall we? Let's see. I've got a 3 x times x squared minus 4. Who? Who? This continues to factor if you want. 3x times x plus 2. x minus 2. Meaning our points of intersection include a 0 and a plus and minus 2. Uh-oh, there's three points of intersection. What the heck? Okay, so... Um, what that means is, here, you know what, I've got a, a fancy little graph for us right here. Let's just delete this. Boom! Yes, we have three points of integration, uh, three uh, points of intersection, I should say, right here. We had a negative two. We have that positive two. It also intersects there at the origin. Okay, this is a problem. And the reason why it's a problem is because look at where your top function is. Well, the top function over here on the left-hand side is the cubic function, but then whenever it crosses the origin, it now becomes the bottom function. What am I supposed to do in this particular case? We're supposed to do top minus with bottom, right? Okay, that means I'm going to have to set this up as two separate integrals, so I can do top minus bottom in this case, and then switch it over here past uh, from 0 to 2, so that it is the parabola minus the cubic for top minus bottom. <laughs> Oh, crazy. Yes. Is it going to happen on the AP exam? Probably. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you an example where it did happen on a free response question. Uh, okay. So we're going to go just to set this problem up here. And then uh, I'm probably just going to throw it straight into the calculator at this point. Um, because I know that I, I know you can handle the anti-differentiation and plugging in, you know, FTC stuff. So we're just going to throw this into the calculator. And I'm going to show you a nifty little trick. Okay, so from negative 2 to 0, there's the first one. And, uh, you know, when I set this up, let's say that I was going to use a calculator for this completely. Just use the names of the functions. Don't write all this stuff down. It's going to save you some time. Just go f of x minus g of x minus the g of x, okay, with respect to x. And then we want to add in the other one where it switches the order of these from 0 to positive 2. And now it's the g of x function, which is on top. It's the parabola, the g of x function, minus the f of x function. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I can just throw both of these little things into the calculator. And uh, why don't you go ahead, pause the video so that you can throw them into the calculator yourself. I have already taken the liberty of doing this. Let me switch over here to my camera view. <laughs> Um, where is it? Here we go. My fancy calculator. Turn it on. If you don't know where the on button is, boop. Oh, home screen. Y equals. I don't, don't, don't even ask. I, I, for some reason, I skipped the Y, Y1. If you wanted to look at the graphs, there they are. They're real pretty, but I don't need that. Um, I do want to make note of the fact that for mine, my f of x function is uh, y2 and my g of x function is y3. Can you remember that for me? Because I'm probably not gonna. All right, let's quit back to the home screen here. And uh, let's see, this is math number nine. So we can get the definite integral. And that first one is from negative two mm, to zero, I think, right? Yeah, okay, zero. And then inside... The parentheses, remember the shortcut, keyboard shortcut to get your functions. It is alpha f4. 
And uh, I think that I did y2, and then it's going to be y3. So y2 minus y3. So nib minus. And then let's go back in there and y3. With respect to x, don't forget that little piece. And then we're going to uh, add in. I was about to subtract. No, I don't want to do that. And then another definite integral. I'm going to go math number 9. And this time it's going to go from 0 to positive 2. And then switch the order. So y3 minus y2, in my case, d minus and uh, y2. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sounds right. And uh, exactly 24. Wow, that's uh, unusual, but that's what it turned out to be. Okay, excellent. All right, now here's the little trick that I'm going to show you. Watch this. I, I could have shortcut this. And the way that I could have shortcut this is I could do this as one complete integral by using absolute value. Let me show you. So what I'm going to do is just one of these things, uh, math, number nine, uh, going from negative 2 to positive 2, ignore the whole point of intersection that's in the middle. So negative 2 up here to positive 2. And then throw some absolute value. If you don't know what those are, that's an uh, end of math. It's under num, and it's ABS. It's number 1 here. And remainder? Are you kidding me? Here, let's delete that. Let me try that again. The I don't know what I hit, but it wasn't absolute value. And then it doesn't even matter what order you put this in. Watch this. Watch it. I'll go um, alpha f4. Let's do this one minus the other one. And uh, now, whenever you throw some absolute values in here, just understand it sometimes takes a little bit longer than when it isn't in there. But let's go ahead and uh, oh, look, there we go. And you know, just to show you that it also works in the opposite direction. Let me come back over here and then switch the order. Make that a y3 minus y2 wait 14 seconds and you can see that it's also 24. look at that shortcut um why why did that work here let me let me show you why that worked okay back over here so uh going back to the definition of absolute value function let's say that i have something like this y is equal to absolute value of x right and you can write that as a piecewise function. Well, when x is already positive, it doesn't do anything. So it's just equal to x, as long as x is greater than or possibly equal to 0, right? Um, however, if it's already negative, you have to make it negative. Well, you cancel out your negative by doing a negative in front of it. And then you go, hey, that only works whenever it's less than 0, right? The two negatives would cancel each other out. It's basically a piecewise function. So the same exact thing happens for us on the difference of these two functions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the absolute value of f of x minus g of x. Well, when, let's say, this one here is bigger than that one, the absolute value doesn't do anything, and it's just equal to f of x minus g of x. It's basically this thing that's right here, right? Um, however, if this one is bigger than that one, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. We're going to take the absolute value. It's going to make. It's going to make the whole thing uh, negative. But we take the absolute value of that and uh, makes it positive again. Here, let me show you this in terms of a little picture here. If I can find PowerPoint, is it still on here? Let me uh, fast forward a little bit here. Um, I'll get here eventually. Hey, here it is. Okay. So look at this candy wrapper little looking thing, and you can see in this one that it intersects a couple of different times. And what is your top function versus your bottom function? It switches a couple of times over the course of this interval from A to B. And you could. you got a couple of options here. You can set these things equal to each other, so you can find these limits of integration so that you can do top minus bottom over each one of those intervals, or just take the absolute value of the difference between uh, – them in either order, just like this here. And uh, once again, the reason why it works is because you're thinking of this in terms of the definition of the absolute value of some sort of function. So this is what we were just explaining, that when your f of x function is the bigger one, when it's the one that's on top, the absolute value doesn't do anything. It's exactly equal to the f of x minus g of x, the top minus bottom. However, whenever the uh, g of x function is the one that's bigger, the one it's 
when it is the one that's basically on top, then you're taking the opposite of that. In the same way that I did this right here, you're taking the opposite of this whole entire function here. If I take the opposite, that makes this one positive, that makes this one negative, as you can see right here. Oops, oh, I just made that right. Yeah, it's supposed to be laser pointer. All right, there you go. So uh, the AP uh, exam allows you to do this. It's a perfectly acceptable method whenever your functions intersect multiple, multiple times, as you're going to see in uh, the next example, which is taken from a free response question.